Hi, I'm Chris from codereviewvideos.com and in this video I want to answer a member's question which is how do we add a maintenance page to our Symfony applications? So you might have seen this with something like WordPress which is when you're updating your WordPress blog for momentarily it will pop up a web page that says that the page is under maintenance and check back shortly. You may have even seen symphony.com do it as I did when I was just about to jump on a plane and wanted to download the cookbook before I went on the flight which was terrible timing. Now there's unfortunately no built-in way of doing this and it doesn't look like there's ever going to be a built-in way of doing this. I'll link to this particular issue in the show notes but effectively it says that it's never going to be done which is a bit of a shame but honestly it's not that big of an issue I'll show you how to implement it and then I'll show you a couple of other ways of doing so using some third-party bundles now one thing to say before getting started with this is that you may not even need a maintenance page if you use a tool like deployer which we've covered here on codereviewvideos.com before then you don't even technically need a maintenance page as your deploy should be almost instantaneous. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the application now. And what I'm going to do is declare myself a new service. And this is a little bit chicken and the egg sort of situation here where if you didn't know how to do this to begin with, then knowing that you need to create a service is a little bit tricky, honestly. So just bear with me. But what I'm going to do is create a service called a maintenance listener. And I'm going to set up my class to be an app bundle event. For the moment, it won't have any arguments, but it will need to be tagged. And this is a little bit like, again, going back to WordPress where we tag posts. All that a tag is doing is telling Symfony that this particular service is meant to be used for a specific thing. And in this case, it's going to be the kernel event listener. And the event that we want to listen to is the kernel dot request. And then when we hear that request, or that event should I say, then we want to call a specific method and that method can be anything, but generally it would just be named in the format of like on kernel request because that's the event that we've just received and that event will be injected for us into this method as we shall soon see. So I also actually need to give it the class name, which is a really tricky thing to spell, honestly. And as we've just declared in our services.yaml file, we want to create ourselves a method called onKernelRequest. And as I said, it's going to get an event and that is going to be a get response event. And immediately now we can set the event to have a response, making sure to give it the right code, which is a 503 error. And then we will stop the event propagation which effectively stops any further events from taking place. So if we refresh this now, we can see that we went down. You can see that we've got our 503 error as well. Now, by the very nature of what we've just done, this has broken the site for everybody. So I say broken, it's put the site into maintenance mode for everybody. So if we create another route, then because requests are going to come in, in exactly the same way, whether they're going to demo or another, we're always going to be down. Now you'll very likely want a way to toggle whether the maintenance page is shown. So one particular way of doing this may be to check if a file exists. And for the moment, we'll just hard code it. So we'll just get the path from the server. So this is the server here, this is my local. So I'm just gonna take the path there and I'm gonna create myself a file inside the, the web directory. And if that file exists, in fact, it will say if that file doesn't exist, then just simply return. Otherwise, do this bit of logic here. So we're returning early there and keeping the indentation a little bit nicer. So if we refresh this now, the file doesn't exist. So we're not seeing the maintenance page. But if we go in here, we create ourselves a new .lock file. It doesn't really matter what's in there. As long as it exists on the server, then when we refresh, we go into the maintenance mode. But honestly, we don't really want to be passing in that hard coded path to our file exists check. So let's inject it via the constructor. And that's just alt return over the variable on a Mac to initialize the fields. Let's jump into our parameters YAML and add that in. Kernel root DIR is going to resolve to this app path here. So we need to go up a directory into our web directory and look for the lock file. And if we refresh now, ah, we get an error because I've not passed it in. <laughs> Whoops. So if we jump into config, go into our services, add the arguments. 
and our only argument is going to be that lock dir path. I think it was called lock dir, lock path, I've called it. And now you can see we're down because that file exists. And again, delete the file and we should be back up. And you could get a little bit more fancy in here by injecting Twig to render yourself off a nice looking maintenance page or whatever. But for the sake of this, I, I will put more of that in the show notes. But the last thing that I really want to cover is that there are a couple of bundles which do this for you. So there's Lexic Maintenance Bundle. And there's also Corley Maintenance Bundle. And basically both of these are going to give you a slightly more advanced implementation of what we've already covered, maybe using some console commands and stuff to make it that little bit easier to manage.